Hey everybody, welcome to another Cactus Science video. This is just a quick follow-up video on my previous video about the most efficient cactus farm designs. Like John Sullivan, I was hoping that the video should hopefully settle it once and for all, but there were still some suggestions and also claims that there are even more efficient farms I want to address. Also, I have to correct myself in a few minor details. Also, one more note, because there has been, of course, this huge development between my videos with the yeah, showcase of the Cirrotic Cactus Farm that works on Minecraft 1.13 and above. That kind of makes the conventional Cactus Farm obsolete in 1.13 and currently also in the 1.14 snapshots. But of course, if you play an older version, like Minecraft 1.12 and lower, then you still need to build one of the conventional cactus farms. Also, who knows if maybe in the future Mojang changes something and the Cirrhotic cactus farm doesn't work anymore because it's probably not intended, then we also yeah, need to go back to those designs at some point. And I've also heard on some of the Spigot servers that the Cirrhotic design doesn't work, so you also need to build one of the conventional farms there. So the first thing I want to address is the faction cactus farm. So I got several comments, like the one from Per Ragnar, he says, Faction players know even more compact. Winky face. A two scoop says, Faction players know the truth. Or yet Matteo Salvini says, This farm, so he means the cobble wall android farm, is inefficient compared to the cactus string sand farm of faction. Now of course, it's really easy to spend five seconds claiming something without giving any proof, or even giving a source what the faction cactus farm is in the first place. So judging from those comments, it seems like all the faction players all know a big secret and they don't want to tell me what it is. So I went to YouTube search and found several videos of faction players claiming to have built the biggest cactus farm ever. And yeah, checked those videos out and they all built the same cactus farm design, which is kind of a modified Seth Bling design. So here's the cactus farm design the faction players were talking about. Uh, yeah, similar to the Seth Bling design, you place a sand block on top of a string, which is next to a cactus, uh, and the sand block is the foundation for the next cactus plant, and also breaks the uh, the growing cactus from the cactus plant one block lower. Um, the difference to the Seth Bling design is that the farm is packed even tighter. But if you think about it, the whole premise of the faction cactus farm is actually not really clever. So they pack twice the amount of cactus plants into the same volume. But if you actually look at it, each of those cactus plants on both sides is surrounded by sand. So that means the items that would fly towards the left or right would uh, bump against the sand block, fall down and get destroyed by the cactus itself. This is probably even more than 50% of the items because the an item is a quarter block wide. So even if the yeah, item would just fly diagonally, there's still a chance it gets stopped by the sand block here. So at least 50% of the items are immediately lost. So what is the point placing twice as many uh, cacti in, in the same volume of blocks if you lose twice as many items as well? So the faction player cactus farm is basically just the worst version of the Seth Bling cactus farm. The Seth Bling cactus farm yeah, basically also has the same issues. There's also sand on the side of a lot of cacti, um, but it's not as much as in the faction player farm. So some of the cacti actually only have sand diagonally uh, or only have sand on three sides. So we can also now take a look at the numbers. So here we have the faction farm that I also tested for 10 hours. Uh, we have a farm of a size of 40 by 40 by 160 blocks, in total 31,200 cactus plants. And we're only getting 21,500 cacti per hour. So that means we only have an efficiency of 28%. 72% of the items are lost with the faction player farm. You can also now look at the compactness rating. It's a 0 0.088 cacti per hour per block. And here would be the build effort, 4.36 blocks per cactus per hour. We can directly compare this to the Seth Bling form, uh, which actually is more compact since we get more items per volume. So it's slightly more compact, we get 0 0.094 cacti per hour per block, and also the build effort would be even lower. 
So overall, the faction player, for, uh, yeah, Cactus Farm, is just not a good idea. So one idea how you could improve the faction player Cactus Farm is use the same Android fence trick I showed in the last video. So here we have a gap between the rows of the cacti. If we fill this up now with androids and fences, uh, we could prevent that items that would uh, fall to the side would land on the cactus blocks on the lower le levels. So I did it over here. Fill it up with the androids next to the sand block and the cactus, and in between we got the fences. So the loss of items got reduced dramatically. Instead of losing 72% of the items, we only lose 53% of the items. So yeah, 50% of the items are immediately lost because they just fly to one of the sides. Um, but yeah, we can at least improve uh, the efficiency of the items that, f that fly towards left or right from this perspective. All right, but overall the numbers also for this concept aren't that great. If you look at the compactness, it's definitely an improvement, 0.114 cacti power per block, but the build effort would be increased dramatically. Uh, 7.55 blocks per cactus per hour. Compared to other designs, this is a really bad number. And there's another comment I want to address, the one from Adam Shadow. He says there's an even more compact design that I use, and that is to place cactus in a chessboard pattern. Therefore, every second block in the cactus lay is a cactus. In your designs, it is only every fourth. By doing that together with the androids, you get the highest production per space used. Again, no proof given. And he also says it would be nice to test less compact designs using but or observer detection and pistons. Therefore, you get the efficiency of the micro design without entities. Right, I will probably make a separate video showcasing some piston based uh, cactus farms that basically get rid of the need for a hopper minecart while getting the same efficiency. But I want to yeah, address the chessboard pattern cactus farm. So the idea of the chessboard cactus farm is basically the same as with the faction player cactus farm, is to put twice as many plants in the same amount of blocks. So if we look at this, actually, yeah, it looks quite good because none of the cactus has uh, yeah, any other sand or whatever directly on the side, but there's a lot of cacti diagonally. So all the items that would fly slightly diagonal would then get destroyed by the Diagonal cacti, of course. So I also improved the design by putting the end rods and the fences in the middle. It at least would stop some items and prevent them from being destroyed from cacti in the lower layers. And I would say, let's just take a look at the number so we can ascertain if this is a good design. So in total, let's take a look at the compactness rating immediately. It's about as compact as the faction player or Seth Bling design, 0.094 cacti power block, and also the build effort is pretty much in the same range as the Seth Bling or faction player design, 4.18 blocks per cactus per hour. So to sum it up, what Adam claimed that the chessboard pattern cactus form is more compact than the Android cobble ball design is definitely not true. If you look at the number of this design here, Compactness is 0.15 cacti power per block compared to 0.094. Um, but the design is definitely a viable alternative, I would say, because it might be really convenient to build. There's a lot of uh, similar stuff going on on the same layer, so this might be an option, actually. So I also want to correct myself. I made a mistake in the last video that that fan pointed out, he said, I think it's worth noting that you can make the Sizuma sign with water in every layer, so it means the modified design with the slabs. Um, more compact by placing the sand directly in the water rather than on the glass, reducing the height to 4 fifths and increasing efficiency by 5 quarters to 0 0.09 cactus per block per hour, and it's definitely true. I made a mistake, so basically I put the sand block on top of a glass block, uh, which definitely is not required. And yeah, I just tested the complete form again, and we get those numbers now. So we have a 99% efficiency. Uh, the compactness is also in the same range as the Seth Bling design now, as that fan said, 0 0.09. And the effort also got lower because we have fewer unnecessary blocks. So it's uh, 3.28 blocks per cactus per hour. And there has been a last second development. I was actually already finished rendering this video, ready to upload it to YouTube. And then I got a message by Farigian on Twitter. He has a really nice improvement for the water collection system, every layer design. 
So let's check it out. So he wrote, this layout for the improved Zuma farm is as compact as the Android and Cobalt wall design and I'd argue easier to build. There's no need for glass blocks and you can share water streams between modules. So I immediately went to uh, my testing world to try this out because it's pretty obvious. If we can rid of the dividing walls in between, we can build this more compact. Uh, and he's completely right. This is just as compact as the Android and Cobalt wall design. Because yeah, Every second block we have a cactus, just like in the Android design. And also every fourth block there's a new layer. The so same compactness, but this is the important thing is, it's actually more compact since the item loss is just 1% instead of 5%. So what we're looking at here is the most compact cactus farm design. And it's really a nice thing about the community that we can find the best designs sometimes together. I spend about 10 hours testing cactus farm and so on, but of course I can also miss stuff. So I wasn't aware that it would work out with the water streams that we can have them at the same layer and basically infinitely expand it. Uh, so what you need to do sometimes is, sometimes you basically got a dead spot with the water like here. Then you just need to punch out the slab and place a sign there so all the items that would land here in the middle, they would fall through the water layers like this and would get collected at the bottom. I also already tested this in Minecraft 1.13, so uh, items would float up in Minecraft 1.13, but they still reliably fall through the gaps here. So this is also working in the future versions. All right, so what can we say about this farm? Let's also take a look at the numbers. I've been testing it again with carpet mods. We can also check it out. Yeah, I've been testing it for 10 hours before. Now again, uh, pretty much got the same numbers. So this is a uh, 40 by 40 by 160 farm again, and this time we're getting uh, 37,600 cacti per hour. This is a 99% efficiency, and also the compactness is actually better than the Android and Cobble Wall farm. Uh, 0.15 cacti per block per hour, also the build effort beats everything else, 3.06 blocks per cactus per hour. What's also really good about this farm is the great performance. So I did a one hour tick warp and yeah, the farm is running at just 1.0.6 MSPT on my computer. So that means I could make this farm almost 50 times as large uh, without lagging the game. So this is actually quite good. Um, the moment you have getting 37,000 cacti per hour, can probably even make a farm that would yield 1 million cacti per hour without lagging the game if you have nothing else running. So this is quite nice. Okay, now it's time for a conclusion. Um, I would definitely go as far to say that what we're looking at here is the best cactus farm because it's just superior in every single category. It's the most compact design which requires the least amount of effort. And also it's really lag friendly. So again, thanks a lot for Region for pointing this out. I wasn't aware that you can do the yeah, water streams this compact. Uh, this definitely helps out a lot. Um, the Android and Cobble Wall farm design is also quite interesting. It almost has the same compactness, but of course the build effort is quite higher. Uh, so that's why I would definitely recommend to build the single layer water collection system. Also faction players don't know better uh, the cactus sand string design is definitely nowhere near the efficiency of this design here. So at the end of my extensive cactus farm research, we basically came back to a design which was already known as one of the best cactus farm designs. But I would say my research was def definitely worth it because I found out about the importance of using slabs at this layer and that it's um, not really worth it to completely surround the cactus with fences since we already have 99% efficiency. If you would completely surround all the cacti with fences, uh, then this is 60% more effort. Another interesting aspect is that the conventional cactus farm is more lag friendly than the serotic cactus farm designs we have currently. Might also change, maybe somebody finds an even more lag friendly one. I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. And also if somebody else uh, finds a more compact cactus farm with the conventional method, then also keep an eye out for that and yeah, we'll, we'll inform you about this. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.